OK, so as I mentioned, characters and strings and loops, when they're all pulled together, allow us to do quite interesting things with strings. One of the key things that a loop allows us to do with the string is to traverse the string, which just means to visit each letter in the string individually. So we have this char at method that allows us access one letter at a time or one character at a time. And using a loop, we can traverse the string, visit each index, and perform some action or check some condition. Okay, And we could do this line by line by line, repeating ourselves over and over again, but there's no sense repeating ourselves when we have access to loops to do that for us. So let's look at a coded example. Develop an application that accepts the user's name as input. The application should count how many times the letter A appears in the name. This application should make use of instantiable classes and we'll save the instantiable class as count A. So we're going to accept a user's name as input again and we're going to count how many times we find the letter A in that name and we're going to print that out to the user. So let's switch over to TextPad and take a look at this. Okay, so here I am in TextPad. You'll see I've already opened a class and I've named it count A and I've got my count A app as well. Okay, so starting with our instantiable class, count A, remember we want to accept a string from the user that represents their name, and we want to count and print how many times the letter A appears in that name. So, we start with our class header, public class, count A. Inside then we have our data members, and in this case it's going to be string name, and int let's say count. Okay, now again, not forgetting these need to be private because we're in our instantiable class. So private string A and private int count. All right, and we'll use the count variable to count the number of times the letter A appears. Then we have our constructor, public count A. Inside here then we say name equals empty quotes and count equals zero. Then we have our set method, public void set name, string name, this dot name equals name. Then we have our compute method, public void compute, Inside our compute method, this is where we're going to do the hard work and we're going to traverse the string and we're going to try to find the letter A. So, we're going to loop through the string, first of all. And we know that the first index in every string is zero. We don't know what the last index is going to be, but we know the first index is zero. So in our for loop, and we'll just use a for loop for argument's sake, but we could use a while or a do while, I'll have my initialization int i equals zero. So I'll start at zero. So the idea here is to map your counter to your indexes. So my i here really relates to the index of the string. So for int i equals zero, next thing I need is my termination. We continue so long as i is less than what? Well, we want to continue so long as i is less than the length of the string. So what I can say here is, while i is less than name.length. And I can calculate the length of the string here and say, keep going while it's less than name.length. Now if you wanted, you could declare len up at the top in your data members. And the first thing you could do in this method is calculate the length. And then we could use len here, but it's up to you. And then my progression is going to be i equals i plus 1. OK, for each iteration of this loop, I want to check if the particular letter at that index is an A. So for that, I'm going to use an if statement. So I have if name dot char at. So because I'm looking at a particular character, I have to say name dot char at. Now the index that goes in here, well, the first time around it's going to be zero, then it's going to be one, then it's going to be two, and it's going to keep changing every time the loop runs to move through all the letters in the string. So what variable or what value would I put in these brackets? 
Well, i is also going to move from 0 to 1 to 2 and change every time we move through the loop. So i is what we put in here. So if name.char at i, if the character at i in name is equal to the letter a. Okay, so we're checking. If the character at i in name is equal to the letter a, then we want to take our count, which was up here at the top, which represents the number of a's we have, and we want to increase that. So count equals count plus 1. Then we close our if statement. Okay, so if we find an a, we increase the counter. If we don't, we don't want to do anything, so we don't need an else in this statement. And then we close our for loop, and we close our compute method. So we're going to visit each space in the string. We're going to check if that particular character is an A. If it is, we'll increase our counter. And by the time we get to the end of the string, our loop ends, and we should have counted all of the A's that were there. And all that remains to do in this particular class is our get method, public int get count. And all we do in here is return count. And then we close our class, control and one to compile, and now we're on to our app class. So you'll see I've already got my comment in here in my app class, so we can jump straight into the code. Public class count a app public static void main string args. Close my curly brackets so that I don't forget later. First thing I do here is I declare my variables, string name, int count, and then I'm on to declare and create my object. So that's count a, my count a, equals new count a. And now I do my input, my process, and my output, which of course require me to import Java x dot swing dot j option pane and now I get my input name equals j option pane dot show input dialog null please enter your name so I've read my name in I send it into the instantiable class my count a dot set name name then I run my compute method my count a dot compute so this all kind of follows the same pattern as the last time I now need to get back the number of a's in the string so count equals my count a dot get count and now I just print it to the user j option pane dot show message dialog null the letter a appears plus count times in your name okay if I Control and one to compile that, control and two to run it. Let's test it first with Francis. The letter A appears one time in your name. And if we run it again, and let's try it this time with Adam, the letter A appears two times in your name. So it is looping through the, the string, it's counting each A that it finds, once it checks to see if it's an A, it counts it, and then it sends it back to the app class. So it's important, it's very important when dealing with characters and strings and doing the different problems that you'll encounter with strings, that you can traverse a string with a loop. Maybe you'll use an if statement, maybe you won't. You'll do lots of different things, so it's important that you can traverse one end of a string to another using a loop to perform some sort of action. So in terms of characters and strings, we've really only looked at declaring and creating characters, declaring and creating strings, assigning values to them, 
getting the length of a string, using the char at method. There are lots of other methods we can use. We've already seen the equal the dot equals method previously. So it is important to go and investigate what other methods are available for strings. We've seen dot equals, we've seen dot length, we've seen dot equals ignore case and others. So do some further investigation around that. But for the most part, these are the things that you'll you will absolutely need and you do need to know how to traverse a string then from one end to the other using a loop and going forward then we'll take a look at using some string buffers to manipulate strings in the next section and again we'll be using even more methods there and we'll be using our loops even further thanks for watching